So, Father, we want to give you all the praise and all the glory. We are very grateful for a new month, the month of August. Uh, this is a glorious month, the month of new beginnings. Father, we thank you for what you did for us in the month of July. Oh, very, very grateful. You moved. You showed up. Thank you not just for July. We thank you for January, for February, March, April, May, June, July. Here we are in August. We are very grateful. The eight months. Uh, we call the month of August, um, the, the month of July, uh, God. And we thank you because the troop really showed up, the troop of glory, the troop of heaven. We named them according to uh, the names of the children of Jacob. We thank you for Asha. It said, we shall be happy. Lord, thank you for happiness and joy. He said, happiness is the man that is in such a case. Happiness is the man whose God is the Lord, Psalms 144. We are grateful. Thank you for healing. Thank you for manifestation, protection. We can't thank you enough. I want to praise you because you are God. You are faithful. You are merciful. You are the light of the world. You shine forever. Blessed be your name. Thank you for the uh, hypersonic church family of God's Room Assembly. And those who are watching and generation that will watch thereafter, Lord, we thank you for uh, enabling us to be a blessing and serve God's people. Thank you for saving our soul. Lord, how can we thank you enough? You are honorable. You are mighty. You are faithful. You are powerful. You are glorious. You alone at God. You can never lie. You can never disappoint. you be God forever and ever and ever. So we give you praise. We come in your power, in your name. Thank you for your blood that cleanses us. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that washes us. Be exalted. Be magnified. In Jesus Christ's name, we give God praise. Amen. Hey, guys, let's roll. We are done with the book of First John. <laughs> Uh, clap offering for Jesus. Hey, go back, listen. It was just those things I just snip, snippets. So you need to go back to it. Hey, a time we come when we'll be able to share that in details. Maybe during one of our ministering to the Lord uh, programs or our soak program. Some people know what I'm talking about. And please, I want to invite you. Uh, for some who will be uh, watching, um, please. Uh, try and worship with us and uh, go to our website. You get some information. And also check us up. Check us up on Instagram. And please follow, follow, follow Jesus on those pages. So many things. And then we also want you to uh, sign up for so many exciting things on our platform. So you can check all that out. You can see that on your screen right now. It will be a blessing. Now, we, have, we, we did the book of James. James happened to be the brother of Jesus. We call him James the Less. The other James was James the Great. So the, the one, the one that, was, that was the one that died. Um, the, the James that James means Jacob. You know, James, that's New Testament word, I mean, uh, for, for Jacob. So uh, the, the, the first James, you remember that Herod killed him. So he was not able to write anything, but but the James, who was the brother of Je who was the brother of Jesus, wrote about faith, and we did that sometimes. So you can afford yourself of uh, that um, podcast, and uh, it will be a blessing. And if, uh, he wrote five chapters. Now we dealt with um, the five chapters of First John. Of course, we could have said let's go to uh, Second John and Third John, but really it's kind of a little um, kind of. A little a blending, so uh, you can read Second John, you know, talking about apostate and how we need to deal with all that kind of a thing, and the book of Todd John, the first uh, Todd John, which was his epistle, also was dealing with the same thing and how some people did not receive John. You, you should be aware of that, you know, not to follow those who are heretic and all that. So everything just blend together. It was writing to little children, little children the elect lady and all that. So God will give us grace to deal with First, uh, Second John, episode of Second John and Third John. But you see, let's look at the biggie. Uh, <laughs> I love some people in the Bible and they are my real brothers. And um, let me just give you a little example of some of those guys. Hey, uh, when you look at 
I thank God for Moses. Uh, hey, Moses is a, is a papa. <laughs> hey, Abraham, papa. You know, but when you talk about Josh, Joshua, oh my goodness, my goodness. I love Joshua. I love most everybody. But Joshua, maybe uh, contemporaries want to talk, you know, teach me some things. Let's hang around, you know, somebody that destroy the walls and all that. You know, walk around, march around, and really give the children of Israel their possession. You know, uh, my natural father prophesied over my life and said, hey, listen, you will be the Joshua of our generation. That was what he said. I received it. That's my natural father. Actually, he read the book of Joshua over my life, Joshua chapter 1, read everything. He was reading it. I nailed that. So I was just very thankful for that. I love Joshua. I love Elijah. Ooh, fire. Hey, 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 especially if you're somebody that you have a lot of commission in your life. Elijah, man, fire, 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 fire. I love it. I love You cannot be a missionary and not be an Elijah. You need that fire. I love Elisha. Quiet but deadly. Ooh. <laughs> Instead of consuming the people, we say, come here. I'll take you to the king. We'll feed them. Elisha was brutal. Man, they were saying, go up ahead. You remember what happened? He commanded you know, that he cursed those children in the name of Allah, 42 of them, two Shibias came. It was the one that said, by this time tomorrow, Elisha, oh God, beautiful. And when you talk about Paul, Peter, let's talk about Peter first. We're going to talk about him today. I love Peter. I love Paul, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, I love the writer of Hebrews. I believe it was Paul. Some people said it was uh, uh, Apollos, but that's fine. And how can I not love John, who wrote the book of Revelation? We're coming back to that. You know, John, oh, glorious, glorious. I love John. Woo! And I love the ego prophet, Isaiah. <laughs> yes. Now, one of the person I love, Peter, I want to talk about. And most importantly, the one I love, 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 love. How can I define that love? Jesus, who is the summation of all of these beautiful people. You know, what can I do without Nehemiah? What can I do without Ezra? The post um men who are not just even in ministry. They were just people doing mundane things, and God so much used them. Now, we are starting this new month with the book of Peter. I'm just going to give you intro. I don't know how that we go, because we need to know Peter. Who is he? Before we can also talk about his writings. I think we did not do that for James, and we, we did that a little bit for John. We could have gone in-depth, but hey, listen, it's just, just because of the timing. Let's see how God will help us today uh, during this month. Now, Holy Spirit, please help us. Breathe on us. We thank you in Jesus' name. First of all, the book of First Peter, that's what we're looking at, five chapters. We believe it was written likely between A.D. 60 and 65, which means after the death 60 years after the death of Jesus Christ. 60 to 65 years after the death of Jesus Christ. This historical uh, explanation is very, very important. So take note of it. Traditional, tradition indicates that Peter dies sometimes around 67 AD. That is, uh, 67 years after Jesus died during uh, Emperor Nero's reign, which was uh, uh, Nero, Nero was reigning, uh, the, the, the great Nero of, uh, of Roman Empire, between A.D. 54 and 68. And we know Peter authored this because he said the same thing. Uh, he said the same about uh, that. He, he identified that it was the author based on 1 Peter chapter 1. We can see that. That's very clear. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Peter authored that book. Now, what was his purpose of writing the book? 1 Peter, what was his purpose? Uh, he wrote two books, 1 Peter, 2 Peter. We're going to... I think if God give us permission, we're gonna. I would like us to really, really delve into Second Peter as well. But we're looking at First Peter right now. What was the purpose of writing? First Peter is a letter from Peter to the believers who had been dispersed throughout the ancient world and were under intense persecution. Have you been persecuted? Are you a missionary? You're really, you're hearing me right now, or are you being persecuted for being a Christian in your family? You know, um, anywhere you are and, you know, people are persecuting you or you are not a serious Christian before now you're a serious Christian and everybody's calling you all kinds of names. You know, the thing you can, you, 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 why, why do you stop compromising? Why is yours like, you know, above the board? Hey, this, this, this message is for you. 
you know. Number two, if anyone understood persecution at all, it was Peter. We will learn about that. Number three, he was beaten, he was threatened, he was punished, he was jailed for preaching the word of God. We're going to talk about sufferings. Suffering, I love it. Suffering as a Christian and where that will lead you to. Not suffering as an unbeliever. Number four, he knew what it took to endure without bitterness. How can you endure sufferings and you're not going to be bitter without losing hope and in great faith living an obedient, victorious, and triumphant life? Peter. Ooh. Number five, this knowledge that he had, this knowledge of living hope in Jesus was the message that we want to deal with. Second Peter dealt with uh, apostasy, false prophet and all that. But this one is about living hope, the living hope in Jesus you know, and he presented to us Christ as the best example to follow. Now, we need to talk about who was Peter or who is Peter. Number one, <laughs> Simon Peter, also known as Cephas, according to John 1.42, was one of the first followers of Jesus. John 1.42, and he brought him to Jesus, and when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon. The son of Jonah, thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by inter interpretation a stone. Has Jesus given you a new name? Have you contacted Jesus? I think when you contact Jesus and you start following him, a new name will come. It doesn't literally mean a new name. It might mean a new name. It means a new character, a new vision, a new mission, a new purpose. It's going to give you a new purpose for your life. Oh, stone? What do you stone to do? Stone to build? Stone to kill the devil? <laughs> Uxus' name is called the Goliath. Stone to become the chief corner stone. So many things. He said, hey, listen, you better hear me. If you don't hear me, you know, fall on the stone. If you don't fall on the stone on the rock, the stone will fall on you. There's a, div there's a divine collision. When the stone falls on you, it's going to grind you into powder. Stones in the brooks. They were to pick 12 stones inside Jordan River, which would be a monumental uh, uh, reference for children's children regarding how God brought the children of Israel out of uh, Egypt, passed through the wilderness, and enter the promised land. Stone, 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 stone principle. Stone. There was a stone that brought down the image of Nebuchadnezzar. A stone cut without hand. And that stone is nobody else but Jesus. Jesus said, Peter, look at your future. Look at your calling. Look at your ministry. Look at the assignment. Stone. Hey, listen, you're watching me right now. Have you received a new name? You still want to go with the old ambition, old plans, old things. If you really had an encounter with Jesus, you meet with Jesus like Paul. We're going to look at him. I love him. Like Paul, everything will just change. You won't struggle with God. And you know, I heard some people, they will say, you know, God has been calling me. He has been asking me to do it. I struggle with him about five years. No, 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 no. You don't need that. Hey, look at Peter. Now, number two, he was an outspoken and ardent disciple, one other disciple, of Jesus, well, a disciple of Jesus Christ, who was his closest friend. He was an apostle, and he was a pillar of the church. Say that again, sir. A then disciple. One of Jesus' closest friends. I don't call you servant. I call you friends. He was an apostle, a saint one, and he was a pillar of the church. Multi-purpose, multi-callings. You can't say you're just doing one thing, and then you're just there, Several things God want to use you for. And he managed, look at Galatians chapter 2, verse 9. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, they put his name there. Perceived the grace that was given unto me. They put his name there that it was a pillar. So when you remove the pillar, what happened to the building? That was the plan of Herod. He wants to remove the pillar of the church so that the old building can crush. But God says, Aaron, no way, no way. Acts chapter 12, no way. You can't do that. I'll fight for my son. When you become a pillar, listen to me, when you do, when, when, when it's like you don't show up, everything is affected, and you know you're a pillar. You know you are needed. 
You know, the whole responsibility is resting on you. The whole weight of the building is resting on the pillars. That's why we have few pillars today. That's why we need to be praying for pillars. Are you a pillar in your home? Are you a pillar in your family? Are you a pillar in the ministry? Are you a pillar in the nation? Are you a pillar in your corporation? Pillars. Jesus. Samson went to the pillars. <laughs> To kill 3,000, he didn't go to the corners. He went to the two pillars and he crushed it and he killed Philistines. He has never done that before, even in his lifetime. Pillars. Peter was a pillar. Number three, Pillar was enthusiastic. He was strong-willed. He was impulsive. And sometimes he was brash. We're going to learn all that. Number four, Pilar has several feelings in his life, but still the Lord who chose him continued to mold him into exactly who he intended Pilar to be. Even with all his backdrops and all his, all his feelings and all his mishaps, God still mold him. May God mold you. Don't give up. Don't say, God cannot use me. I've messed up. Yes, you messed up. What about Peter? That's why I want to study his book. Number five, Simon was originally from Bethsaida. Where are you from originally? John chapter 1, verse 44. Now, Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. You can literally bring people from your city where you're living to the church. Simon lived in Capernaum, Mark chapter 1, verse 29. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into a house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. That was in Capernaum. And Capernaum and Bethsaida were two cities on the coast of the Sea of Galilee. Beautiful. Affecting cities. Number seven, Peter was married. You'll be married. In the name of Jesus, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 5, have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles, as the brethren of the Lord and Cephas? So it's not the wrong thing for you to be married. You'll be married. You'll be married to fulfill destiny. Why married? Why married? You see, before you're married, you're doing 10. After married, you're doing 1,000. Not that before you're married, you're doing 1,000. After marriage, you're doing 10. That's what we have seen over the years in the life of many people. I don't know, maybe I can categorize that as wrong marriage. You find a wife, find a good thing, favor of the Lord. Number eight, himself and James and John were partners in a profitable fishing business. I'm about to round up right now. Luke chapter 5, verse 10. And so was also James and John, the son of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, for men's for thou shalt catch men. Number eight, Simon met Jesus through his brother Andrew. In your family, who meets Jesus? <laughs> that somebody can say, it was you that you brought me to, my, to Jesus. My brother, you did. My cousin, you did. My auntie, you did. You are the one who did it. Ah, in heaven, I can imagine the blessing that comes to Andrew. Every achievement of Peter can be traceable to Andrew. John chapter 1, 35 to 36. Again, the next day, after John stood and two of his disciples, verse 36, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. And Andrew immediately went to find his brother to bring him to Jesus. When that introduction was said, Jesus gave him a new name there, Cephas Aramaic, and Peter Greek, which means rock. You can look at John chapter 1, verse 40. One of the two which had John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon's Peter's brother. In a family, you get two brothers following Jesus. He first finded his own brother, Simon, and said unto him, we have found the Messiah. A lot of people, we found their brother. I bought a car. I bought a house. I got engaged. I, I got a business. I got money. I got transferred. That's what they said. No, 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 no. For Andrew, no, 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 no. We have found. <laughs> We have found. I did that to all my family members. That was my joy. We have found. Verse 42. And he brought him to Jesus. He had influence over his own family members. Not his family members taking him away from Jesus. Verse 42. John chapter 1 verse 42. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation the stone. Now... Later, Jesus officially called Peter to follow him. Follow me, Peter. 
follow me. Follow me, Peter. I think I hand there. What do we do with Andrew? So when I'm go, when, when we're looking at the book of Second Peter, I mean First Peter and Second, the last letter. Don't forget Andrew. Are you hearing me today? Maybe I want to draw you also to Jesus. I'm not drawing you to money. I'm not drawing you to business. I'm not drawing you to miracle. I want to draw you to Jesus. We preach Jesus. Jesus preacher. Jesus, we drink Jesus, we eat Jesus, we see Jesus, we wear Jesus, we talk Jesus. Come on. Jesus. Jesus Christ, the solution to all of global problem. Jesus is his name. If you don't know him today, I'm bringing you to him. Come, 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 follow him. Say this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I for please forgive me my sins. I've been away from you. I've been disconnected from you. Connect me back. No matter what I've done, the Savior of Peter saved me to give me a new name. Help me to present you to everybody around me. Don't let any of my family members die. There is more to what I'm doing in life. Jesus, have mercy on me. He will have mercy on you in Jesus' name. And for all of us, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God is going to give us a new vision, a vision that will draw us closer to him. Oh, God Almighty, I don't know what you are in the family right now. Maybe you are the carpet. They are trampling on you. Maybe you are the dining table. You are the chair that sits on you. In the name of Jesus, you become a pillar. Pillar of glory. Pillar of wealth. Pillar of righteousness. Pillar that hold the whole house. Oh, Jesus. Jesus himself is a pillar. There's a song that says, you are the pillar that hold my life. God wants us to be pillars. Peter, a fisherman, now a, a pillar, closest friend of Jesus, an apostle, oh my God, that's your portion. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. First week in the month of Asha, the month of August, we'll see you by the mercy and grace of God next week, and we give God all the praise and glory. In Jesus Christ's name. Thank you.